Self-directed support is a process by which customers will go through seven steps to self-direct their life. It offers people a personal budget and it gives people the, the money instead of the services. So if somebody is entitled to receive help or support from adult social care, um, instead of a care manager prescribing a service to meet the need, what we're actually doing is listening to our customers, asking what it is that they need, what they need help with, and then we give them the money to buy that support need. All right, well, you know where it is. We speak to our residents and we gather as much information as we can and we share that with the relevant services. And then we hopefully, we're tailoring our services so that our residents get the very best choices that they can have. Lots of people require support from adult social care. It could be elderly people um, coming out of hospital, it could be people that have recently been diagnosed with something like Alzheimer's disease, people with mental health issues or problems. So those issues could be temporary, um, but they need help nevertheless. It could be people with a learning disability, people with a physical disability, or people that might, for a, a particular reason, need some kind of intervention for a short term. Okay, right. Kira. So we need to just make sure now we put the light colours separately from the dark colours. I think the bedding go in first. All right, you put on the bedding then. Our carers are really valuable to us. We have our home carers in-house and, and outside organisations, but also family carers and friends and people that are helping to support people in the community. Yeah, that's fine. That's the way you do it. Just put okay. that in. Outside of the council, we work with a range of partners, and that's to ensure that all of the services that we provide have the best input possible and some of our um, providers that we contract will be more skilled in a particular area and we would need to ensure that we work with um, all of our partners to ensure that our services are the best that they can be. We work with lots of housing organisations such as Owl Housing, we work with private and voluntary sector providers, we also work alongside PCT and we work alongside lots of charities. At the moment within housing we work very closely with registered social landlords because they're obviously providing housing for our residents too. Kira is a young lady who happens to have Down syndrome, who lives in a small semi-independent unit that will assist her and support her to be prepared and train her for a more independent tenancy in the future. A resident like Kira will have a range of services to help her to remain independent and um, she could, for example, be moved into a, an independent flat where she would live, but she would have support to enable her to do that. Kira will need to um, identify a house via the locator scheme. Now, the locator scheme is an opportunity for people to access available housing and you have to bid. The process is fairly easy, but Kira would be given support to enable her to ensure that she was bidding for the properties that best suited her needs. Before she moves into an independent flat, Kira will be given a lot of support to help her with daily living skills, so accessing the community, using local transport networks. She will have help, for example, with using money, so that when she moves into an independent flat, she will have all the skills that she needs. Whilst there, she could continue to have floating support to enable her to, for example, access college or do a work placement. Well, that's done. We will support our residents to do an assessment uh, about their, their support needs, what they need in, in terms of housing, to keep safe in the community, what they might need in terms of personal care, what their mental health issues might be, in which case we need to ensure that those are addressed. So we look at the assessment with them, we support the individual, and then we will do financial calculation on that based on the needs, and we will then tell the person the equivalent money that's available to meet the needs of them. So you need to go and pay your bill? Yeah. The different types of needs that people will have to maintain independence can be vastly different depending on perhaps age group, it could be due to disability. So for somebody might mean that they need to have something like Meals on Wheels or some support with, um, with their food could be entirely different for somebody else. We have housing options for our residents. These include a low-cost home ownership option which enables people that have a low income to access and be able to buy a share, for example, in a property. And we're also lucky that we have the First Time Buyers Initiative and this initiative was something that residents wanted they asked us, our children want to live in the area but they can't afford to live in the area. And as a result of that we developed this scheme which has enabled many residents to stay close to their families and live and work in the borough. We help people to get into employment, particularly people who have found that 
traditionally quite hard, so they might have a physical disability or they might have a learning disability, um, but we can support them through an individual or a personal budget to have help um, when they're doing their job and to actually get them into employment. We have a range of services for older people to, to enable them to remain as independent as possible for as long as possible. So we're providing support in the home, we're providing a, a range of housing options that they can access and we will tailor that service around the needs of the individual. If they don't want to go into a residential home um, and they want to maintain in the, in the home that they've always lived in, we can help them to do that by, for example, um, help them to maintain their home um, in some form or another um, or to visit them when they need help. CareLine helps people stay at home. It gives them access to people that can help them if there's an emergency. So, for example, they'll have a necklace with a, a button on it and then if they fall over or if they need help, they're able to press that button and they will be connected through to an officer who can then answer their call and find out the best way to resolve that problem. Within telecare, it gives more support because it has sensors throughout the house. So, for example, if somebody was to get out of bed and not come back to bed, the sensors would know that. So, for somebody who's confused, they're still able to live at home, but in the event that they do something which is unusual, it will go through to a person who will be able to send out a member of staff or the emergency services to help that individual. We are committed to keeping residents safe in Hillingdon and we're working very closely with our partners to ensure that everybody is aware of their role in keeping people safe and that they have the confidence to report any issues that they have. We want every resident to be aware of their responsibility in keeping our residents safe and being able to come to us and tell us if they feel there is an issue. It's wonderful to be able to see our residents um, have a better quality of life and, and that's what we could go to work for. It's really, really good feeling to see people actually increasing their independence and achieving what they really have always wanted to achieve but never thought that they could. And actually seeing them making their choices and us supporting them to achieve their dreams, that's amazing. Mm -hmm.